Hey everybody, it's Tom, WA2IVD. I've mentioned several times on this channel that I am not a big contester. I do operate Field Day and enjoy operating that with our local radio club once a year. And I do also enjoy getting on contests every now and then and just kind of operating for fun, maybe seeing if I can get a few points and seeing how many points I can give out. This past weekend was the ARRL Ritty Roundup and I thought it might be fun to operate it. I used a piece of software called FL Digi. That's a free open source software that supports, aside from radio teletype, a whole bunch of different digital modes. I thought you might enjoy seeing how I set it up to operate a contest and how I use it during a contest. So let's take a look. We are using FL Digi version 4.2.03 which I think I can confirm here there we go 4.2.03 I'm not going to go through how to install this and set up your radio this is just to set it up for a contest and this is my setting it up for a contest everybody's going to want to do this a little bit differently I'm not a big contester as I said but I like to play around with them so first, we're going to go into the Configure menu, and we're going to do Config Dialog. I'm already on the Config tab here, Contest, so we'll open that up, and we want to do a general contest. Now you can see I've already got this set for Ritty Roundup, but if you click the down arrow here, they have a whole bunch of contests already pre-programmed in here where it understands the exchange and what needs to be done for logging and what kind of dupes are allowed or not allowed and so forth. So we've selected Ritty Roundup. State QSO Party, none selected because we're not doing that. Text Capture Order. And I'll show you what that means when we're actually on a screen with stuff coming in. So we have call sign, state, serial number, country, RST received and RST sent. We're not actually, we are not actually going to use those because as you'll see here down below, I have it set as RST is always 599 or 59. And then this is the dupe color. So if we try to work a station and we've already worked them, it'll show up in red that he's a dupe. And this yellow dupe color, it took me a little while to figure this out. If I switch bands and there's a, and I click on a station that I've already worked on a different band, it'll show up in yellow. But in Ritty Roundup, that's fine. You can work everybody once per band. So the dupe check is call plus band. So if I've worked the same call on the same band, it's going to show up in red. And you can put other things on here like time span I guess there's some VHF contests where you're allowed to work the same station again if it's been more than a certain amount of time none of that applies to Ritty Roundup so we can just leave this the way it's already set contest exchange and serial number and this is what are you going to send I'm not even going to fill this in and I'll show you why that is on the macros because the exchange that I need to send is always going to be the same and there's a starting number and a number of digits this is if you're doing contests where there is a serial number that I need to send now in Ritty Roundup if I work a foreign station a DX station outside of the US or Canada they need to send a serial number but I'm going to be sending my state is the only other thing I need to send in my exchange. And again, we'll look at that in a minute. So this is all set for the contest now. So I'm just going to click save for that. And we're done with the contest part. Now for logging, I don't really need to play with any of these because I'm not going to connect this to like N3FJP or a different logging system or EQSL or logbook of the world directly so we don't really need to play with any of the logging stuff at least for what I'm doing so that's it in the setup related to the contest again I'm not going to go through all the other just normal operating setup stuff right now so we're going to close that and really the only other thing that I need to set up in here is my macros and that's what you see here with this big 
bar across the screen, you actually have, I think it's, what is it, 12 times 4, you got 48 different macros, and you can see I've got a bunch of these programmed. I think some of these actually came pre-programmed. So let's look at how we set these up for the contest. So if you go to any of the macros and you right click, it opens up the editor for that macro and shows you what's in there. Now I've already programmed a CQ, so uh, I'm going to put the put the program in transmit mode. So TX tells it to go into transmit mode with the with the brackets around it, and then it's going to send CQRU roundup, and then my call, and then my call again, and then it's going to put it back into receive mode. Now all these things in brackets. There's a list of them on the right side here, and there's a whole ton of things that you can put in here. So my call is my call, whatever I have programmed for my call sign. And if you want to put it over here, let's just say I wanted to send another a space and I wanted to send my call a third time. All I have to do is click on this and then click on the little green arrow here, and it adds it over here. So it's pretty easy to put things that are pre-canned items into your message. Now, I'm only going to send it twice in my CQ, so we'll just leave that the way it is. And then you can have the macro button label on the bottom, and I've got CQRU, and these little funny symbols are what just um, put these symbols up here. You don't have to use those. You can just leave it with just the text if you want. So I'm going to say apply, which saves that into the macro and close and you can save all these as a file uh, so that you can load different macro files if you want to have them set up for different contests so that's the cq roundup and honestly i've got that programmed i'm probably not going to use that much i do more of the hunt and pounce kind of operation so that's where we get to the second part and now i've got the second macro here puts it into transmit mode, and I just send my call sign twice and put it back into receive. So let's look at what do we need to do for the exchange before we go any further here. So let me close that. And I've got the, the rules. So this is the PDF of the contest rules here. And if we scroll down a little ways, They've actually got a typical contest contact. So they show us here the CQing station it says CQ R U D E and their call sign. The answering station just sends their call sign, nothing else. And they've got some um, somewhere up here. It says it's not necessary to send the CQing station's call unless you think there's some confusion. So basically, if you're going to answer somebody, you just send them your call. And then the CQer sends the call that answered him and then his exchange, 599 Connecticut, because he's in Connecticut. And then I would say, okay, you're 599 Illinois. And then he would say, thank you. And then instead of going back and doing another CQ, he'd just say roundup DE, whoever he is. Now, this is a suggested format. You don't have to follow this exactly, but it kind of gives you an idea what you need to do. So let's go back into the program. And if I'm going to do hunt and pounce, so I'm going to go back into this macro, I'm sending my call twice instead of just once. And the reason I do that is, you know, if there's a little noise on the frequency or, you know, the band is fading or whatever, if I send it twice, there's a better chance the guy calling CQ is going to see it. And that only takes another second. So when I when I reply to somebody, I'm going to send my call sign twice. So that's already in there. Apply and close. Then the third macro that I'm going to be using is my exchange. So again, I'm not going to send it exactly the way they had it listed in the rules, but pretty close. So I'm going to send my call sign, and then when the station comes back to me, He's going to give me, presumably, you know, 599 and wherever he's at. So I'm going to go into transmit, and I'm going to send call. This is the other station's call, so that's one of the 
pre-canned items in here. Call is the other call sign. So I'm going to send his call sign and I'm going to say QSL 599 and then I'm going to say KS for Kansas and I'm going to send that twice again just to make sure and then TU which is thank you and then go back into receive mode. So that should be done. And let's see. And then this is if I'm going to be doing the, um, if I was going to do the CQing and somebody came back to me first, then I would say his call sign QSL. I got the signal report he sent me. Thank you. Good luck. And then I would send my call and then go back into receive. And again, I'm probably not going to be using that macro. So that's all the macros I'm going to program for this. There's a bunch of other ones in here. I'm not using these. And then one other thing, this takes up a lot of space showing all four lines here. So if you go up into view, one of the choices here is view hide 48 macros. And if you click that, it makes it just a single line. You can still see all 48. You see the little one over here on the right? If you just click that, it scrolls through the four lines. But I'm only going to need the one. And then one other thing, if you're not familiar with, um, with FL Digi, this top part of the screen here is the received in any data that you're receiving. The bottom part of the screen is what you're sending. So this is where the macros will go in. Or if I wanted to just type, I could type stuff to stuff. You know, you could manually type things in here. CQD, WA, WA2 IVD or whatever. So the bottom part is the transmit. And then the left side here is sort of a multi-receive. If it sees multiple signals across the band, you'll see the different signals come up in here. And when I get on frequency and get on the contest, you'll see how that works. And then on the bottom here, you just click where you want to receive. If there's multiple signals across here, you click on one. And again, you'll see how that works once we get into the contest. So there's one other thing I went to show you, and I went to full screen here. The way that I'm going to have this set up during the contest, up here under logbook, I can click view, and then you can move this around or size it however you want. But I'm going to have it basically sized so that it just fits down below. So I can see my operating screen, but I can still see my log entries here as they go in. All right. That's about it for the setup. Let's try a little bit of contesting. Now, I was going to try to actually narrate this as I was doing it. And I played around on the contest a little bit, and there's no way I was going to be able to concentrate enough and then still actually narrate and work the contest. So I've got some video of me working the contest here. I'm going to play that now, and then I'm going to kind of do a voiceover over it and explain to you what's going on. So let's get to that part. Okay, here we are in the contest, and I am just finishing up a contact with N6ZFO, and you see that I clicked on the upper left there, that's what sends it to the log and it clears the current call log area which is along the top of the screen there. So you'll see N6ZFO in the log and now I'm tuning around to see if I can find another contact. I'm both tuning the radio and also clicking on different signals in FL Digi on the waterfall. And there's a really nice feature on FL Digi, which you'll see here in a second. I'm going to click on this signal that's up around 2500 hertz. And I want to move that. So when I click that QSY button, you notice that the frequency on the radio changed and it moved that signal so that it is right at 1500 hertz. It's right in the middle of my audio passband. 
and now I just clicked on, actually I touched the filter selection on the 7300 so that I could narrow it down because I didn't want to hear that upper stuff. So now I'm clicking way up higher in frequency. I'm going to click that QSY button and you'll see that it's going to move that frequency. You saw the radio change and it moved that down to the 1500 hertz place on the waterfall. Now I'm going to click on his call sign and you see that it inserted it where it says call up at the top. So now when I use that macro that has call, it's going to use K4SO because that's what's been inserted into the call. And I'm just going to let him finish and then somebody else went back to him so I'm going to wait a minute here. I'm going to let him finish the contact with this other station. And then as soon as he says CQ, now I'm transmitting him my call sign twice. And he's heard me. He's coming back to me there. So I'm going to send my exchange. And then you see I clicked on the VA for Virginia and it inserted that in the state province field up at the top. So now, as soon as I get the thank you from him, I click on the log button, and then now you'll see his call appeared, and we've logged that entry. Now I'm moving up the frequency. I'm clicking QSY, so that retunes the radio and moves me down. And then now I can find another station. So I clicked on his call sign, put it in the call. Now I've clicked to send my call sign. And he heard me. He's coming back to me. And he's in Maryland. Now here you see it says MD there. I can't click on it because it doesn't recognize it. It's not two letters, so I've got to go up there and manually type it in. But that's okay. He said thank you, so he came back to me, so now I can log this, com this call. And that's how it goes. Basically, I'm moving up the frequency a little bit at a time. If I click QSY here, it just moves everything down. So I kind of work my way along and keep walking along the frequencies. And I use FL Digi to do all the tuning and all the logging. And it's pretty simple and pretty automatic. Not quite as simple as FT8 where it does the whole contact for you, but it automates a lot of it. All right, we've got the background audio turned off now. I spent a total of an hour to an hour and a half over the two days of the contest actually working it in front of the radio, and I ended up working 56 contacts, which I think is pretty good for not spending a whole lot of time on it. This is one way of setting up FL Digi to operate this. I'm sure there's probably 50 other ways that you could set it up, but this works for me, and it makes it pretty straightforward and pretty quick to work contests. Of course, there are many other programs that you could use for working contests. I like FL Digi because it's free. It also supports many different modes. Besides RIDI, it supports PSK 31 and 63 and a bunch of different MFSK modes and modes like Olivia and a lot of other digital modes that aren't nearly as popular now as they used to be. But there are contests out there for many of these different digital modes. So you should give it a try sometime. I've got a link in the description for FL Digi if you want to go download it and take a look at it. They have pretty decent online documentation for it as well. Anyway, I hope you found this useful. As always, thanks for watching. I'm Tom, WA2IVD, and this is Ham Radio A to Z.